What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than most of the other ones. This is not going to be a gear review. This is not going to be a diving video. It's not going to be a video discussion as far as a, a, a training uh, method or, or physics lesson or anything like that. Uh, this is simply going to be my backstory of who I am, how I got into the dive industry, how I come to own a dive shop, and I want to give you a little bit more background as far as why I choose to sell and use the equipment that I do. And the reason I want to make this video is simply because there's been a lot of comments on our channel here lately about we need to be more open-minded about the gear choices that we use and we, you know, we shouldn't push just one type of gear out there to, to our customers that, you know, we could grow our, our business if we offered more selection than what we do. So I want to clear up some, some issues there, some questions there. And, and explain certain things to you. So uh, to start real quick, uh, I've had a week off from work, so I've really had time to go back and answer some of the comments. When you guys put comments on our videos, we really, truly appreciate that. But sometimes it does take takes us a little while to answer those questions, simply because I do work seven days a week. I do run a dive shop seven days a week, and, and I've got so much stuff going on. Uh, you're you're going to fix to learn that, and if you've seen our um, intro or our tour video of our facility, you'll know that we are more than just a dive shop. We own a boat repair facility. We're a tow company. We also have a salvage company as well. Uh, and I'm, I'm a family man like most of you guys out there are. Uh, I'm married. I do got two daughters. As a matter of fact, today we just got back out of the hospital with my wife and our newest daughter. She's three days old today. Uh, or the time that I'm shooting this video, she's three days. By the time you guys see this, she'll probably be four or five days old. Depends on when I get it edited and uploaded. So I have took off a little bit of time to spend time with family as well. But I stay extremely busy, so when you put a comment, if I don't answer you right away, just stick with me. I'll try to get to your questions and your comments just as quickly as I can. Um, but, you know, I, I do stay extremely busy. So, once again, guys, I appreciate you watching these videos. I appreciate all your comments. Um, but let's jump into it real quick and just get started. Uh, first of all, my name is Brian Stafford. I am co-owner and lead instructor for Lake Hickory Scuba Center Incorporated. Uh, I know there's been some confusion in the past about our name. Is it Lake Hickory Scuba Center or Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina? Our legal name is Lake Hickory Scuba Center Incorporated. has been since day number one. Uh, we recently, when I say recently, within the last few years, we purchased the marina that we were leasing a small part of. Um, for our dive shop and we ended up for just our street name or our signage name if you will we we added marina to our name so instead of lake hickory scuba center it's lake hickory scuba and marina but we are legally known as lake hickory scuba center incorporated so that's kind of how we got the name there uh, but to get into my backstory i started diving in the um, late 80s it was 1988 when i took my first breath underwater and i was only six years old back then i wasn't even old enough to get certified uh, my business partner which is my dad who's also an instructor he was the one that actually got me into it his father had got him into it and of course you know family other family members were divers and i was very fortunate that my entire family dove both my parents my grandparents you know aunts uncles cousins they all dove so i was really immersed into diving at a very young age i was very fortunate that my dad allowed me to do it at such a young age of course in a in a neighbor swimming pool and even in the lake itself he didn't take me very deep about 10 15 foot deep now i want to go ahead and tell you out there i do not um encourage this to you guys if you got children young kids you know take them to an instructor to get certified don't don't take them out yourself unless of course you are an instructor but diving as fun as it is can be dangerous and if you don't understand how the equipment works or the the full um outcome of the physics that's involved then you can get seriously injured if not killed doing this so please don't take your children out there and do this unless they're getting properly trained by an instructor but now in the 1980s we did things a little bit different so once again i'm not advocating that but this is just that, the way it that worked out for me uh, but from age six to age 12 i'd logged a ton of dives with my dad both in freshwater and saltwater my grandfather who got us into diving he actually owned a house down at the north carolina coast and so throughout the summer when i wasn't in school i would travel down to the beach house with my grandpa and i'd either be deep sea fishing or diving uh, in the ocean all summer long so i've logged a ton of dives both freshwater and saltwater before i ever actually got certified and of course back then 
uh, you can't, you couldn't get certified at age 10 like you can now. I had to be age 12 to get certified. And so when I turned 12, my dad took me to the local shop. I got my patty open water certification. Uh, and at that age, that's really all I knew was that patty was the only agency that existed. It took me several years before I, I realized there were several other training agencies out there. Um, so as I, I come up through the patty ranks, I took every specialty that I possibly could. I uh, ended up becoming a patty dive master straight into uh, an assistant instructor and straight to an instructor right after that and, and I started teaching scuba. Now the dive shop that I got certified in and I started out as an instructor in still exists, it's still in business today. Uh, we're very, my company or our company and his company, are, are they work hand in hand. We work very well with them side, you know, right side by side. They're about nine miles away from us um, by the way the crow flies. So uh, we, we do have a great working relationship with them, uh, but I, I started teaching for that shop, and over a series of a few years, uh, I, I got my eyes open to other shops in our area that taught for other training agencies, and like I said, when I first started out, Patty was all I knew, and I, I slowly learned about these other agencies, but I didn't really know much about them. So during this same time frame, I had a full-time career as a law enforcement officer. I was a deputy sheriff here in the county in which I reside. I was also a police officer for a surrounding city. And so through my connections in law enforcement, I ended up meeting another law enforcement officer who was a captain for his department, but he also was a dive shop owner. And his shop was about 50 miles away from mine, or from the one that I was working for at the time. And so he ended up persuading me to come over to his shop and working for him for a while, which I did, and, and I was really glad that I did. It wasn't nothing against the first shop. It was just that the connections that I'd made, it was very beneficial for me to transfer to his shops. I was able to do crossover programs and become instructors for other training agencies outside of PADI, uh, which most of you guys know I teach for five different training agencies currently. I'm a PADI Master Scuba Diver Trainer. I am a uh, SSI Assistant Instructor Trainer. I am a PDI instructor trainer, an SEI instructor trainer, and a three-star monitor course director for CMAS. So when I transferred to that other shop, I, I was able to learn about more information on these other agencies and learn about their training uh, regimens and, and their philosophies and their procedures. And I really liked, you know, the non-patty way of doing things. And I, I'm still a pal, proud patty instructor. I'm not going to diss them in no way, shape, or form. But I, I like these other training agencies as well. So I ended up jumping ship, going to the other shop, and I worked there for several years. And then I ended up meeting another law enforcement officer out of the state of New York. Uh, and he owned a dive shop up near Plattsburgh, New York. And I, I ended up, you know, during my crossovers, he was actually the one that crossed me over to two of the or three of the other agencies, which was PDIC, SEI, and CMAS. Uh, I ended up working for him kind of part time. And, and when he, it's kind of a long story of how we met, but when he travels down here to North Carolina, he helps us out with training as well. So it's kind of a, a mutual thing. I, when I'm up there, I teach for him. When he's here, he teaches for me. So it's kind of how I, I got involved up there. So that was three of the other dive shops that I'd worked for prior to opening up my shop. Well, towards the end of my career in law enforcement, I was really burnt out. I wanted to do something different. Uh, my father, who was a commercial contractor at the time, uh, he was pretty much burnt out. He'd been in construction since the 70s, and he just he was tired of it. He wanted to do something different. And so we decided, hey, we're both dive professionals. Why don't we go into business together and open up a dive shop? And so we did. Now, it wasn't very easy for us. I mean, we both had very good careers. We were making a ton of money. We were, we were supporting our families. And then all of a sudden, we were just going to throw it all away and open up a dive shop. So the first thing that we had to determine was, where are we going to get the funds for this if we quit our primary uh, job or prim you know, leave our primary income source? So my dad ended up shutting his company down, selling all of his equipment. Um, you know, I grew up on a farm. I'm an avid outdoorsman. There was a lot of things that we had that we just didn't use much anymore, like campers and four-wheelers and a lot of stuff like that. So we ended up selling all that to open up our dive shop. Now, the problem that we had was we've got the money to do it. We just didn't have a facility for the dive shop. So we approached a family member of ours who owned the marina, the marina that we own today, uh, and asked him if we could lease just part of the marina out for a dive shop. And he was very gracious to us. He ended up leasing uh, just a small little 500 square foot section for our dive shop. 
And we did very well in the beginning, um, and we slowly started growing. Over the process of several years, we start, started to grow really exponentially, really. And he was wanting to get out of the marina itself, so he approached us and asked us to buy the marina. And so, you know, one thing led to another. We ended up purchasing the marina as well and merging it with our company. Now, with the marina, that's how we come to uh, acquire the boat shop as well and the tow company and all that. And so we're one gigantic company now. Uh, it's a boat shop, uh, a marina, a boat repair facility, a tow company, an underwater salvage company. Um, so that's kind of how I become to be part owner in this. Um, let's let's jump back a little bit to when we opened the store because I, I said I would mention this to you guys as well as far as our gear that we carry. Uh, when we first opened up our shop, the shop that was about nine miles from us, or it still currently is, that happens to be the shop I started at, my dad started at. We decided that when we was going to bring in our first line of gear, that the last thing we wanted to do was compete with this other shop. And if you got two companies next door to each other, if you will, and they both sell the same product, the only thing that one company can offer their customers over the other company is really a better price. You can't offer them a better product if it's the same product. If you both got technicians for the same the same gear manufacturer and, you, and you're both doing the same service you can't really offer a better service so to speak all you can do is is try to compete with them and offer them a cheap your customers a cheaper price than what the other store is and we didn't really want to do that because in business you end up cutting your throat that way you you don't make enough profit not only to survive but to to grow which is what most companies want to do they want to grow so we started looking at other gear manufacturers that wasn't really popular in our area so to speak not that they wasn't there but they just wasn't as popular as what some others are and so there was two companies that we decided to look at uh really big and of course the scuba pro mares and and they are today the two industry leaders they sell more equipment than any other gear manufacturer out there they are truly worldwide companies meaning no matter where you go out in the world you're either going to find scuba pro or mares almost guaranteed not not at every shop but within the area that you're at those two companies you'll you're about guaranteed to find equipment for and so that was another thing that we looked at what company can we sell equipment for that no matter where our customers go in the world they're going to be able to find parts so that that was kind of the two companies that we looked at now in our area there was another local scuba pro dealer so we decided against scuba pro and we decided to go with Mares. now before i go any further i want to give a disclaimer out there i'm not going to diss any company's uh, gear out there i was very fortunate that working for the other three shops prior to opening up this one that i've sold all the manufacturers on the market, at least all the big boys out there, I've sold Aqualungs, Eagle, Sherwood, uh, who else, Scuba Pro, I've sold uh, Mares in the past, I've, I've, I've sold it all. If, if it's a big manufacturer, I've sold it in one way, shape, or form, and I've used it in one way, shape, or form, meaning either personally used it uh, in training classes, or I've, I've owned that gear personally and I've used it, and it's all good, guys. I'm going to tell you right now, they could not put it on the market if it was bad or dangerous gear, so... I trust it and I like it all, but just to get back to why we chose Mares as our primary line, it was simply because we didn't want to have to compete with price, first and foremost, and we wanted a company that was a worldwide company so that no matter where our customers uh, went in the world to dive, if they needed a part or a service, they could get a part or service within a, a certain driving distance. So that's why we chose Mares. Now, to kind of comment or respond to some of the comments that we've been getting on our channel about we need to be more open-minded, that, you know, there's other companies about Mares, we understand that. There's there's tons of companies out there, guys. I've owned gear from every manufacturer. I've sold for every gear manufacturer out there. Um, and I currently, to this day, we are known as being the, the Mares store in our area, but we sell for other gear manufacturers as well. We're also a Zegel dealer. We are an atomic dealer as well. We sell XS Scuba. So, you know, we sell subgravity. We sell other gear manufacturers outside of Mares. It's just Mares is our primary line. So that's kind of how I got started in the industry. It's how I got, uh, or how I come to own a dive shop. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our future, um, what our goals are. Of course, our company, we, it, we're still growing. Uh, we, we slowed down a little bit, but we want to grow exponentially. From, from the day we started to now, we, we've doubled or tripled our size. Uh, we've, we've probably doubled or tripled our, our uh, product that we, we've got in stock, uh, which we're very grateful for, for our customers that do buy from us. 
but we want to continue to grow. Uh, I have two daughters that I would love one day to be able to hand the keys off to them and say, hey, I've built this diving empire for you. It's yours. Do what you want with it. Either sell it or run it or do whatever you want. So I'd love to be able to hand this company down to my, my children one day. Uh, but yeah, we, we do want to grow. We are a business like any other business, and that's that's our goal is to grow and to be successful. So um that's kind of our goals here in the future of what we're looking for. As far as our social media platforms go, uh, our YouTube, we, we're continually growing on it. We're constantly getting new subscribers every single day. Uh, guys, you've been very responsive to us. When we've asked, hey, what would you like to see? We get those comments. Or what do you think about this? Y'all get put them comments out there. Uh, as stated earlier, I don't want to argue with you guys on our social media platform. So if you put argumentative statements and comments we're going to read right over them and go on to the next one but if you want to have a legitimate conversation with us uh, or you do have a legitimate concern please put it down there we'll read over it we'll discuss it with you if you don't want to do it in a public setting by all means send us a private message we'll be happy to discuss it i know i have quite a few followers here on youtube that call me weekly they'll call me with a question whether it's on mares equipment or a training scenario or something like that I have other instructors that call me as well to ask me, how would you handle this situation? And even for outside of the training agencies I teach for, I have instructors call me all the time and say, hey, how would you do this? Or how do you do it through Patty or through SSI or through one of the other agencies that I teach for? And I explain it to them. So if you've got any questions, please contact us. All our contact information is down below. All our social media uh, site contacts down there. Our email, of course, just lakehickerscuba at gmail.com. Our website's down there. Phone numbers are at the bottom. Uh, if I think my, my personal sales listed down there, if, if you can't get a hold of me in any other way, shape, or form, you, you're more than welcome to contact me on my cell. I'm on call 24-7 pretty much for the fire department that I volunteer for now. And so my phone's on, you know, it's on, turned on 24-7. I never turn it off. It's always, if, even if I'm sleeping, it's right beside me on my nightstand. So you, you're more than welcome to call me anytime. Please don't call me late at night, but if you need to, I'm there to answer questions or whatnot. But guys, I really appreciate you watching these videos of ours. Uh, I appreciate all the, the subscribers, uh, all the comments that we get, even the bad comments. I do appreciate them. It lets me know that you are watching our videos. You do have concerns. But like I said, in your comments, please try not to be argumentative. If you disagree with something I say, I, I'm perfectly okay with you saying, hey, I disagree. Offer me an explanation of why you disagree because I learned from your comments, guys. Just because I, I'm that high up in the industry and I've been doing this my entire life, um, I learn every single day. I learn from students every single day. I learn new ways to teach based off you know the way they interact with me in the classroom. And so I love learning from you guys. So keep up the comments. We really appreciate that. If you like this video, hit that like button for me. Matter of fact, any of our videos, hit the like button if you like. If you don't, hit the dislike. That's okay too. It just lets me know what content to put out in the future, how to change our videos to make them more entertaining or more educational for you. Um, Guys, stay tuned in the future. We've got plenty more of the uh, Can You Dive series that we recently started. We've got plenty of sites that we're going to go out and dive and film. We've actually got several filmed. Unfortunately, I've not really had the time to edit them. Like I said, I did take a week off from work uh, for family purposes. Um, we just had our second kid, so I have been off for a week. But I do go back tomorrow around lunchtime, uh, and I do work seven days a week. So if you put a comment, I don't answer you right away. Give me some time. Give me a day or two, and I promise I will get back to you. Uh, the best I can or answer your questions the best I can but once again guys I really appreciate you watching these videos uh, if you're not a subscriber please subscribe to us because we thrive off you uh, but as always check back each week for new videos make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter like us on Facebook pin us on Pinterest subscribe to us here on YouTube and as always guys we appreciate your business